Hi, welcome back. We're now um, carrying on with the final phase of this uh, restoration. And um, as I mentioned, what I want to do next is uh, an alignment. It just happens to be very, very simple because I've got all the instructions. So here we go. First step is to uh, adjust the IF on the AM bands. You set it on medium wave. This is various languages here. The cap to minimum. So turn the cap all the way to one end, the tuning. You insert 452 kilohertz via a 33 kilopuff, so 33 nan, nanofarad capacitor. That's just to make sure you don't get any DC on there. You insert that signal first into point A and you adjust coils S9 and 11. Then you move the signal to point B and you adjust coils 8 and 9 and all that for maximum output. So what you're inserting is a 452 kilohertz carrier with a modulated audio signal on top. Very standard, very normal for this. And I'll show you now why we're doing this by looking at the circuit. And this makes sense. If you look at the circuit, there's point A. It's the grid of the EF89. In other words, it's the input of the IF amplifier tube which sits between the two IF transformers. So what you're doing is you're adjusting, you're sending the, the, the signal in there and you're adjusting S10 and 11. So you're adjusting this one and that one to get your maximum signal coming through. In other words, you want to make sure you get the maximum audio signal coming through. By measuring the audio signal, you'll be determining just how strong that IF frequency is getting through. So you basically, you're putting it here so you can adjust this transformer. Then you're moving it back one stage to before that previous IF transformer, which means that you're moving it to here. That's point B, as you can see over there. So then you move the signal to the input of the mixer oscillator. Same signal, 452 kilohertz with a modulated audio signal on top. And you adjust those two transformers, which is 8 and 9, to give you the peak. And the way to measure this is to put a scope or a voltmeter, an AC voltmeter, across the output. And just to avoid uh, having to listen to the noise, I've put a dummy load, which I'll show you in a second. But just to see where these coils are, we can actually determine very easily where they are because here's the drawing of the top side of the chassis. There's S8, there's S6, S10, S13. So what this means is that you have S8 on the top, S9 on the other side, S10 on the top, S11 on the other side. Those are the two that you'll be uh, adjusting. Let's look at the other drawing. You can probably see it a little better here because this is the top side and the underside. And there you have S8 and 10. And if you look on the underside, you have S9 and 11. So those are the two we're going we're gonna to tweak to try and get the maximum output. Now let me show you how I insert the signal. Here's my 452 kilohertz sine wave. That's the carrier. I have it at probably the minimum amplitude that I can on this uh, I can go just slightly lower on this uh, signal generator, which is 2 millivolts RMS. I have a modulated signal, 30% mod modulation of a 600 hertz signal, and I have that output here. I actually have that coming through a uh, attenuator box, which allows for 6, 12 or 18 dBs attenuation, or the sum of any of those. That's just to make it as small as possible to go in at the smallest signal possible so you can just hear the tone or just see the tone and not swamp the uh, AVC circuits. I then have the ground of that signal coming out of the attenuator to ground which is chassis and I've got the signal itself going to that point which is point A as described on, that, uh, on the drawing. I then have a dummy load which is just a resistor which is the same resistance as the speaker on there. This one's 5.6, it could be 4, it could be 6 thereabouts. Connected instead of a speaker and I have the scope connected to that. Be very careful with polarities because you otherwise you could short the output to ground because of the uh, input signal being grounded. And then I have it coming out of the scope 
and I am seeing that sine wave. And now what I need to do is I need to tweak those coils that I mentioned, the first two, and see if we get any improvement on that. So let's start. It's going down. That's gone over the top and down. Oh, that's about our peak there. I'm checking the voltage reading on there. That's about the peak, so that one's peaked. Let's try the other one. Slightly more difficult to get to. It's going down. Up. Oh, we've got a bit more on there. Quite a bit more, in fact. Let me reduce the amplitude here. Remember, what you're doing is getting relative values, so I've just reduced the amplitude of the input signal so that I can see it on that scale. Okay, so now I'm moving the signal to the other one. I'm going to increase the attenuation here just so that we can not end up with great spikes going on here. And I've got to move it to the input of the um, mix oscillator, the ECH81. And that'll be pin 2. Pin 2, yes. So let's see where that is. Now the FM alignment is next and um, what I'm going to do, they give us some instructions on using the scope to try and get the right shape and get the right S curve. I use a rather simpler method and it's worked well for me so far so I'm going to show you what I'm doing and I think that it'll be a lot easier for anybody um, trying to adjust this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the signals in exactly where they say which is first of all the uh, grid of the IF amplifier so the ECH89 or EF89 I beg your pardon so the signal is going in there this signal is a 10.7 megahertz carrier unmodulated and at a very low level I've got it about um, I think it's about 2 millivolts or something we can attenuate that further so signal is going into the grid of this uh, tube and what we want to do is adjust that transformer down there. Now that's the uh, FM, that's the final or second to last coil in the IF chain of the FM, the, the bottom one. The one at the top is the one that you adjust the, the slope for, so we leave that for now. And what we want to measure is actually a DC voltage. We want to measure a negative voltage across this capacitor, this electrolytic that's on the discriminator circuit. And we're measuring, if you notice there, this is the positive side that's connected to ground. So this is because what it's producing is a negative DC voltage proportional to the strength of the signal of the carrier in this case. So the first stages of the IF that we're adjusting is to get the strongest carrier frequency through obviously to get the strongest signal, 10.7 MHz, through the IF transformers. And then we adjust the top end of that coil for the, um, for the discriminator uh, slope, but we'll get to that in a minute. So this capacitor has a negative side connected to a point down there. And I've got the scope connected to this negative side of this capacitor. The other one goes to ground, right? Now the only reason I'm using the scope is because I'm using it as a high impedance DC voltmeter. If you have a VTVM or a FET voltmeter, that's fine. You can also use a DMM, but the numbers jump around so much, it's pretty difficult to see, so I prefer this. And what I'm going to see on the screen is a negative voltage indicated by a line 
because it's a DC negative voltage and I can look at the line and see what happens when I adjust these uh, these coils and I've got minus 424 millivolts so let me try and tweak that a bit see it's getting better it's getting more negative let's keep going yes oh it's going up so I've hit a peak That seems to be about it. By 40, if I go just a bit more, it's reducing. So I'm going to take it up again. There's my peak. So I've adjusted the peak on that one. Now I've got to prepare for the second one. First thing to do is to reduce the amplitude of the signal generator quite dramatically because you're going back and you're going to put it at the grid of the ECH81. So this is more amplification, so you've got to reduce the amplitude of that signal. And now we're going to adjust that core down there and the one on the other side. Those are both FMs, that's the first IF transformer, those are both cores. So let's check what happens. Right, that's all set. We don't need the volume at all on here. And I'm going to adjust the bottom core it doesn't matter what the voltage is there because this is relative remember I've just adjusted the amplitude of the signal generator so I can get a low enough voltage here that it doesn't trip AVC this is minus 1.2 volts usually if it's around minus 1 minus 2 it's fine so let's see if we can increase this a bit it's decreasing so it's the other way I've gone through the peak. This is very sensitive actually. I've gone through the peak. The best we've got is minus 1.3 over there. Peaked again, damn it. There we go, it's close enough. This is very, very sensitive. Let me try the top one now. That's the wrong way. Looks like that was set. Yep, that's about it. So we picked those two and um, now we've got one more to do and this one is a little bit more tricky because it's you've got to insert the signal into the tube itself let me show you you need to lightly couple the signal to the tube to the uh, FM tube the ECC85 and the way I do that is with a little coil wound around a tape former and I connect the signal on there and um, then don't forget this signal now is not absolute because it depends on how you move it you've just got to look for the relative values as you adjust those two transformer coils in there there and there all right ready to go let's try the first one i've adjusted the amplitude of the signal generator so that i get that uh, around one minus 1.3 volts on there Oh, wrong way. It's getting less. Oh, that's nice. 
Let me move this up a bit. It's looking for the highest negative voltage. Looks like we hit a peak over there. Very, very sensitive this. about it. Try the other one. Can't see this thing. Okay, let's try this one. Nope. Quite an improvement. Somebody's really messed with this thing. Let me drop the amplitude again. Well, that seems to be the peak there. All right. Let me try the other one again just to these are transformers, they do react with each other. No, wrong way. Definitely wrong way. Okay. We peaked that up quite a bit actually. Alright, now we need to do the last one. Now the last core there is the one where you adjust the discriminator slope and what you need to do there is to adjust it till you get a balance setting between the two diodes that are working as detectors and the middle result, the end result, is the audio out. Now, to adjust that and to get the best fidelity possible, what I prefer to do, um, there are various ways of doing this, but what I prefer to do is to remember what we're doing here. We're, we're actually tuning an FM uh, trans receiver and uh, so fidelity will depend on how good my signal is coming out of the speakers right so what I do is I put the scope across the dummy load in this case so I don't hear it but um, the scope is across the dummy load and I need to input I'm going to input a uh, carrier signal of 10.7 megahertz modulated FM modulated with a 600 hertz audio tone and I'm going to look at the scope and see what that tone looks like and adjust that core for the best fidelity. So I've got my 10.7 megahertz. I've got 20 millivolts. I'm not sure if that's enough. We'll check in a minute. I'm modulating it at, it's going to be FM modulated. The frequency I'm modulating is 600 hertz. And I'll put a deviation of 20 kilohertz. I'm not even sure what you're supposed to do here, but that's what I'm modulating. I'm sending a 600 hertz tone into the receiver and I want the receiver to do its job and demodulate it into audio. Let's see what happens. There's my output. Doesn't look too good, does it? Now remember this, uh, I'm measuring it across the output, so volume does have a lot to do with this. So I'll put it on maximum volume. Now let me adjust this and see if I can improve the shape of that sine wave. There I go past and I get distortion on the upper cycle, distortion on the lower cycle. So my best sine wave is probably that. Now all sorts of things could be happening here. I could be overdriving the output as well, so I've got to be careful. There. I think I've just adjusted that to as close to fidelity as I can. That's my 600 hertz um, 
signal that are modulated on that FM carrier. And I think we've actually adjusted the whole thing and uh, we should get a much better result when we test the FM. Let's have a look. And here she is, the last Philips tube radio made, I believe. And uh, one of the viewers has confirmed that this seems to have been, in fact, the last one that they did in tubes before the transistors took over. And as I said uh, just before we finish the alignment, let's see how the FM is. Dos espanhóis acham que Felipe VI é bom rei, ou seja, Espanha continua a ser uh, abruptamente monárquica. Parece ter a ver. We have got it back. Now there's um, where I am here. I get about three or four really good stations on FM. And it's perfect. So we've got our FM and we've got everything else working. Let's just do a medium wave check here. We've actually got a storm coming in, which is probably why you've got a lot of cracking there. That's short wave, by the way. All right, number three. Don't take no. That's why I don't like this rule. Definitely needs to be broken because this sounds like how sexual harassment. And basically, that's it. Um, a lot of that really loud crackling you've got here is that we have in fact got some pretty bad storms coming in. And uh, since I'm using the mini-whip, which is an active antenna, obviously that's very susceptible to, to that sort of activity. Anyway, this was a real pleasure to work on. Um, pretty simple to restore because of the small number of caps and uh, the ones that were in the, 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 the radio, the normal ones they've used are pretty good quality or they hold their value quite well. And so this one was actually probably a record in terms of uh, restoration time. And the radio actually looks very, very good because this has all been cleaned up. The uh, knobs have been polished and everything else. And that's been polished and that's all been uh, washed and, and, and uh, polished and cleaned in the back as well. So this one came out looking really, really nice. As I said before on the first video, there's this crack at the top. But my friend's probably going to change this uh, wooden cover into a solid wood one. So thanks for watching. It was a pleasure doing this. Pleasure showing you this. I hope you've learned something. Hope you've enjoyed watching. If you did, please click the like button and subscribe and see you again soon.